Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy. Today's topic is um, where to start. You know, he just bought a five-acre farm, and I get probably, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 emails a day from all over the country, actually all over the world. And uh, there's folks that are, you know, going back to the land, and they've never been on the land. And they've been fortunate enough, they've saved up some money, and they've bought a, a raw track. Uh, you know, there's five acres of grass, and uh, maybe there's a little bit of woods on it or whatever. Um, but there's there's some forage out there, and they want to set up a grazing operation. And, you know, on a track of land like this, uh, there is a real chance that you can raise enough healthy food for you and your family and uh, take some of the pressure off of not having to buy meat. And uh, there's something to be said about raising healthy meat and raising, you know, healthy kids and um, in your community. If you have extra, you can always sell it. Um, but one of the problems that people get into, it is a very daunting task. I mean, here you are, maybe you've lived your whole life in the suburbs or whatever, and you've, all, you've been watching a lot of YouTube, and there's a lot of uh, information out there. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. And if you haven't done it before, how are you gonna glean which is right and which is wrong? You know, it's that simple. So I'm going to tell you what's right. <laughs> I don't, I'm not, I'm not promoting anything here. Everything that I show you today, uh, I'm not, well, let me back up one thing. The, the timeless post, if I mention that post, uh, I do get a small commission if somebody buys a timeless post. Okay. So got to put that out there. I don't want people getting mad. Um, but the rest of it, uh, there's going to be some other products that I'm showing. I don't get any, I'm not getting anything on that. But I want you to be successful. You've got a sizable investment here. You bought the land. And if you don't set it up right, all you're going to have is a wreck. That's what you're going to have. You're going to have a wreck. So what I've got here is this is going to be part one. And I'm going to go over just the basics. And then we're going to come back with part two. And part two, I'll get more in depth on the fencing. Okay, the permanent fencing. And then part two. Three is going to be the water layout. Um, even today, I'm going to give you some of the parts that I'm going to be using, but I'm going to show you how to put these in, okay? Because um, it is. It, I'm a I'm a C guy, okay? I want to see it. If I can see it, well, then I can probably do it, you know? But just reading a book, sometimes it's a little bit tough, you know, to actually detail what this guy's trying to, you know, tell you what to do. So with that, uh, you know, I've got my, I've got my five acres here. It's, it's laid out. And uh, of course, I've marked off my perimeter fence. And the question is, where do I start? It's just like, oh, I got this land and I want to bring some animals in. And I'm anxious to bring some animals in. Don't, don't, don't bring the animals in until you have this. You've got to have a perimeter fence. Now, what kind of perimeter fence do I want to put on my five acres? Well, if I own that five acres, I bought it, okay? I'm not leasing it, I bought it. And let's say I've got a house, you know, over here in the corner of my five acres, or it may be in the middle. I don't, I'm not gonna draw the house in there. This is a grazing, this is a grazing uh, talk. Um, I will tell you this. <laughs> so many people go in and build kind of a halfway fence. They bring the animals out. And as soon as the animals come out of the trailer, they're gone. They're just gone. Your fence didn't hold them, and they're gone. And you've got all this money invested in these animals and the land, and the animals are on your neighbors. Or they're worse than that, they're in town. And uh, you can't get them back. You know, they're spooked. They've been honked at. They've been chased. And it's just a wreck. So when you bring animals onto your farm, you owe it to yourself, and you owe it to your animals, and you owe it to your neighbors. Keep them on your farm. Keep them on your farm. You don't want them leaving. Uh, you didn't buy them to have them running all over the countryside. And uh, that's not the way to get into a good grazing operation. So what kind of perimeter fence do you want? If I own that property and it's just, you know it's five acres and I have the, the capital to do that, uh, and you've got neighbors. Let's say you've got neighbors around here. Maybe those neighbors have dogs. Fido that likes to chase, uh, bark, whatever. I'm going to put up a, a woven wire fence if I've got a lot of neighbors around me. I'm going to put up a woven wire fence as a perimeter. And I'm going to put uh, either one barb on top or I may put one strand of hot wire on top. Electric, something that 
will shock. It depends if you've got little kids next to you on the neighbors. You know, if you've got little kids that are going to be up against the fence, uh, and you put a hot wire out there, and you're living in the suburbs, and you've got kids on all three sides, you're four, you don't want to be running an electric fence out there. They're going to get shocked, and they're going to go back crying, and you're going to get chewed out from the parents. Even if you got markers out there saying, warning, this is electric, uh, a wolf wire fence, they can't really get through it. I mean, I guess they, they could climb it. Um, but, uh, you know, you got the no trespassing, keeping them off your property. The thing about a wool wire fence is it's pretty darn dog proof. Um, if you got it tight, you keep it low to the ground. And if you don't want dogs digging underneath it, you can put a hot wire, I'm sorry, a bar, a, a piece of barbed wire real tight, right on the, your steel post, or you can use timeless post, put it right on the ground. So when that dog gets to digging out there, he's gonna get his feet in that barbed wire. And that's, that's it, he's done. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can run a hot wire uh, about three inches off the ground. If he is lucky enough to kind of dig in, he's gonna get zapped when he tries to come underneath that fence. Same way with a coyote, you know, if a coyote digs in there. So on five acre tracks like this, I really strongly suggest folks um, it depends on where you live, of course. This is the number one question I get. Oh, how many sheep can I run on? Or how many cows can I run on that? I can't answer that. I don't know where you live. You know, I don't know the rainfall. It depends what state you live in. If you live in an area where you get a lot of rainfall and you grow more grass, of course you can run a few more animals. But here's the number one rule. Don't overstock. Don't bring too many animals in at the very start because you get all excited. Oh, I'm going to get a bunch of animals and let's say uh, you got some money invested in your fence and you've already uh, calculated out your return on these animals and you've got to have, let's say, 20 sheep to make this work, to make the economics work. No, you can't do that. No, don't do that. You've got to calculate how much rest period you can get into here. Now, what, I'm, what do I mean by rest? I'll tell you what I mean. When you bring animals into here and you start rotating them around this five acres... Wherever you start, you gotta have enough time where you started at when you make your rotation around your farm because you're gonna be moving them. That wherever you started at, when you go around and you come back to that, let's say it's 30 days, those plants are recovered. They're ready to graze again. Folks, if you start grazing around your farm, you've got too many animals in there. They're gonna take your grass down too short. And when you come back around, they're not gonna be grown back. They're going to be about half grown back or maybe less. And uh, that's a that's a sure rule for disaster. So don't do that. Stop conservatively. Bring, you know, let's just say you go to your county and the county says, well, you know, in Boone County, Missouri, the stocking rate is one cow or, you know, one animal unit for uh, two acres. So an animal unit is a thousand pounds of meat. Okay. So I typically say you can run five to six sheep for what one cow will eat, for what one cow will eat. So if your county extension agent goes, Joe Bob, you know, we can run, you know, three acres per cow. Well, on here, you've got five. So you can't run quite two cows on that, okay? But you can calculate that out. I could run five. I could run about nine sheep on that, okay? I'm just giving you examples. So here, I'm going to... I want to keep this first part pretty clean here. So you've got your you've got your perimeter in, okay? In my case, if I don't have a lot of neighbors around me, I love using high tensile wire. And I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put in a five strand of electric all the way around my part. It's a lot cheaper than woven. Uh, our animals are broke to it. I wouldn't bring animals into this if it had hot wire all the way around it. And you turn animals in that aren't broke. If they're not broke to hot wire, they're, you're, they're liable to go through that. They might get shocked, but they didn't know it shocked them because they're not broke to it. That's a whole nother video. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you uh, how to break your animals. But basically what we're going to do here, folks, that's it. You're going to put one fence right down the middle of it. And that fence, if you're running, cat, let's just say you're running sheep. So this one fence down the middle, uh, our sheep are broke to one hot wire, okay? It took us a while to do that. If your sheep aren't broke, I would probably put 
uh, this center fence right here would probably be three strands, three, <laughs> three, three strands of high tensile fence. And that distance is gonna be like uh, six, six inches off the ground, 12 and 18. This is for sheep, not cattle, sheep. And so I can bring my sheep in here and I can start rotating them with, with poly, temporary fence, and that's a whole nother fencing expo. But basically folks, I wanna keep this simple. What we're trying to do is rotate our sheep like that, okay? And it depends on how fast your grass is growing, how fast you're gonna move them. I'm gonna cover that in, an, in another video. Um, so you got your, your fence in here and your temporary fence is gonna look like this. These, you're just gonna, these are all being removed as you're grazing except for the one behind them. So when you move them into here, you reel this one back, they come into here, okay? Once they come into this paddock, you can take that one down. All of these are as gear reels and step-in posts. And uh, I'll be going over all that stuff. It's really cool. Um, well, you're going to go, but Greg, if you lock them in there, how are you going to get water to them? Great question. Here it is, right here. Okay. This is called a Plasson Quick Coupler, right here. This piece right here. And this is just plain polyethylene pipe that you buy from PowerFlex Fence. And these are the Filmac. These are Filmac um, fittings. I bury them. I bury them in the ground because I bought this, okay? If I bought it, I'm going to trench it in. I'm going to put it down the ground. And that's going to be another video. I'm going to show you how to install these so that you don't get snakes down in the hole. You don't get dirt around this. They're nice and preserved. And so basically all it works, the way it works, folks, is when you get to this paddock, you pop that open. You take the mail, which is this guy. And when I push down on it, you hear that click? I got water. There's water coming there. This, this is hooked up to my water source when I bought the farm. Let's say you got pressurized water out here. Maybe you got a well, whatever. You're hooked onto this through here. This is a three quarter inch line. This is plenty of water for five acres. And you can run this line all the way down through here under that fence. Oops, under the fence. So no matter what paddock I'm in, I could put one of these every, on a five acre field, I'd probably put one of these every 75 feet. You're looking at $15. This is $15, this guy. This one here, uh, you're looking at around, somebody said the other day, I think they're around 20, 25 bucks. But for 15 and 25, 35, 40. So $40, you can put several water points through here and you don't need one of these. This is $4.95. This goes with your water tank. So there's a hose on here, okay, right here. You put your hose to your tank, your livestock tank. So as your animals are moved, you're bringing the tank and the hose with you as you rotate around. You only need one tank, one. One livestock tank, one drinking tank. And you're trying to buy time as you move your animals around here. So here's where you started at up here. You need to make sure that this area is recovered when you come back. And if it's not, you're moving the animals way too fast and it's not going to be regrown. So with a five acre track, you're a whole lot better off running sheep than you are cows because cows are bigger animals. They're going to eat more. They're going to eat more. I know everybody wants a steer to put in the freezer. If you got five acres, it's going to have to be pretty darn good grass. You could probably raise one steer on that and not overgraze your farm, okay? Uh, you could run, I would start out, I'd put 10 ewes on there, 10 sheep. And you, you're probably not going to overgraze that farm, especially if you're rotating them, okay? So you can run more animals. Uh, sheep are easier. Uh, they're not going to hurt you. They're not going to run over you and break a leg or something. They're easier to haul. They're more children friendly. Um, if you've got a really good fence around here, um, I would still probably get a guard dog or something out there, you know, a donkey or a llama or something to help keep the coyotes or the neighbor's dogs from possibly getting in and harming your sheep. That's another video. <laughs> We'll talk about guardian protectors later on. But anyway, I'm going to wind this up. Y'all have a good one. And uh, remember, where do you start? 
perimeter fence, you gotta get that in. And I'm gonna do a video next in part two, we're gonna be covering what it takes to put in the fence, the materials. I'm gonna show you a close up of the materials we use and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. And then the next part three will be the actual uh, water system installation. And then part four, we're actually gonna bring, act like we're bringing animals in and how we're gonna rotate them depending on the time of the year. So in the springtime, there's a real good rule of thumb. Fast growth of grass, fast moves. Slow growth of grass, slower moves. So we're going to cover that. Y'all have a good one, and we'll see you next time. Hit that subscribe button while we out. Thank you.